Hey, what's up, peeps? You're listening to the Let Loose with Lou podcast. I'm a full-time working woman, mother of three, and a wifey to one lucky man. My passion is getting to know people, listening to their stories, and learning from their points of view on life. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Let Loose with Lou. This is Lou, and I have my co-host today, Steve. What's up, guys? Great to be here. <laughs> and today our guests are Tanya and Kathy. <laughs> and our subject is? Today, we are lucky enough to talk about addiction. We're going to be talking about addiction. We're going to be talking about the nitty-gritty, the, the good, the bad, the ugly of it, and, and what healing and recovery looks like. And we're we're stoked to have two uh, great guests in Kathy and Tonya who who lived it, you know, have seen the, the best and worst of it, and they're going to share their their story and their experience. We're so excited. Thank you. So wel- welcome, guys, welcome. to, to yeah. Letting Loose with Lou. <laughs> and you know? Steve. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, right. and just, uh, just to say a little bit more about myself, um, I'm, I'm especially excited about yes. this one, Louise. I really, I'm really stoked that you <laughs> made this one happen. I, I'm a, I'm a therapist by trade. Uh, I have a private practice and I own and operate a drug and alcohol treatment center. So addiction is very near and dear to me. Um, so to, to hear, yes. to hear you guys experience tonight, it's going to really going to be a great treat. It's going to be a great, he's all excited. He's like, this is it. So I'm mucho excited. Mucho. <laughs> he's mucho. Look, you can blend English and Spanish if you want. Absolutely, there's no, right? There's no Spanglish. rules about that's that. Spanglish, right? We're going to get <laughs> no, There's some, no rules about that. We're going to get Not anymore. Bit, no, not anymore. Not no more. We're going to get a little bit of the chismecito here with the girls. Are we ready, girls? Yes. Ready. Yes. Yay, yes. Let's do this. What questions do you have? So I would like to just speak? start by like letting you guys introduce yourselves. Maybe tell us a little bit about um how how it started like i think a great show just would be hearing how the problem began what it was like when you know? yeah when did your addictions first start kathy when did it first start okay so my addiction first started when i was very young mm-hmm. very young and my mom and my dad divorced mm-hmm. when i was young and um my mom remarried and when i was around 5 years old mm-hmm. i had they had another baby mm-hmm. So I was the only girl, but then I was no longer the baby. Mm. So I started acting out. And then from then on out, I was, um, I would like steal candy or I would, you know, do things that I weren't, wasn't supposed to be doing. And um, uh, when I was around seven years old, I was molested. And when I was eight, I started drinking alcohol. Eight years and, old. Yeah, eight and nine years old. Um, I started drinking more, stealing um, mm-hmm. and marijuana from my friend's dad. And I, it's crazy because when I would look at my daughter when she was eight and nine years old, and I was like, wow, I was that little when I first started drinking. And then they would leave the cans of alcohol from the night before from the parents having the parties, and I would go and drink them right? Wow. And I would drink it. And I just remembered that when I would take that, when I took that first drink, how it made me feel like I was no longer in my own skin. Mm. So alcohol was like my first drug of choice as a young kid. And then um, from there, it just kind of like escalated. I also was bulimic. I um Got, gained a lot of weight and was made fun of. So mm-hmm. then I became bulimic and that was my other drug of choice. Like I didn't eat food. I was almost hospitalized. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. and then from there, I just seemed to always find the friends that had, that did drugs and alcohol all through high school. And, um, it just kind of progressed from there. And it just, and I wasn't really like a full on blown out drug addict. Mm-hmm. I worked, mm-hmm. I had jobs, you know, I, yeah made it to work and um I was pretty functional you know and um it just uh just stuffing all of what happened to me when I was a kid you know and then forgetting all of that and then just carrying on through life and just living God. and then you know I I don't know Kathy would you say that <clears throat> your onset of addiction was immediate or did it take time to kind of 
flower and eventually blossom into a full. Oh yeah, it took time. It took time. When, yeah. when do you think it really, really blossomed? What age? Uh, when it really blossomed, I was, um, I already had my second child and I was 30. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. I was, had already had my first daughter. I was 29. Um, I was already introduced to meth, mm -hmm. but I wasn't, um, like full on into it. Like I was managing it, right? Like I would do a little here and there and I would manage my meth and, um, but I loved it. It mm -hmm. was like. My first line of methamphetamine was my true love. I fell in love, <laughs> so right? Mm. Like there was no mm. other drug in the world that made me feel like that made me feel. Mm. I tried, says that. oh yeah, I yes. tried shrimp. I, I tried, I mean, I liked uh, ecstasy and I liked like who's, uh, who's the Yes. Hallucinogenic. Yes, thank yes. you. Drugs. Um, I didn't like smoking crack because crack was yeah. like really bad. Right. Yeah. And, but when I when I did my first line of uh, well, they called it crank back yes. then. It was like, and that was like, uh, where do I get more? Like, where do I get You're more? And how do I? Yes, yes. Yes. And then from there on out, it was um, I just full on blown. Uh, like, where do I get more? How do I get more? And who wants to buy it? Yeah. Because I didn't want to pay for my own habit. Right. Mm -hmm. So from that point, I was probably. Uh, 24, mm -hmm. 25. You were young. I was young, yeah. but, um, but it was fun. Mm -hmm. It was fun. And, uh, you know, crazy partying, yeah. you know, just wild, not a mm -hmm. care in the world. And, um, and it was like that for a long time. Now this, oh, go ahead. So Kathy, I, I, I'm, I'm really, uh, I respect a lot your, real life experience and thank you for saying that like on camera i think it's really important for us to hear and like for viewers exactly. so one, one of the things i want want people to, to know what you're what you're saying is like addiction oftentimes comes from these hurts mm -hmm. right like family breakdown like your parents divorced you're just kind of a sweet little kid and you took it how you took it and then there's a, a remarriage and then there's a new kid and she also got abused. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that, Lou. Yes, let's get to it. <laughs> I'm like, well, look, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm doing like, something called breaking it down. Yeah, all right, break it down. So you break it down. <laughs> so what, I'm like, <laughs> on the breakdown. So 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 what 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 happened was there was there was a family rupture. Mm -hmm. It affected you as a child, mm -hmm. right? And 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 that that can cause a lot of hurt, and hurt can cause addiction. And then and then like you were alluding right like you and you're sharing is that part, part of what happened to you is that you were also molested mm -hmm. as a child and one of the things that's happened that happens so frequently is that people who who have addiction usually have something like a trauma mm -hmm. that informs their need for comfort so one of the things i want i want to say is that like human beings were we're, we're uh we have certain needs we have a need for pleasure. We have a need for a rest. We have a need for nurturance. We have a need for a break. And when we're overwhelmed or we don't get those needs met, we will figure out other ways to get those needs met, right? Mm -hmm. And so I respect that there was like a, a hurt girl who needed to figure out how to get a break, you know, who needed like a rest from what was happening. Mm -hmm. And the taste of alcohol, you know, was that first – I'll let you fill in the blank, but it sounds like that first break or that first ease, right? It says that in the uh, hot rush mm -hmm. in the body, the heat, yeah. the warmth. Yeah, it says that. So in my in my training as a therapist with addiction, I know that, you know, in uh, recovery communities, it says that like once that once they succumb to that feeling and they have that first drink, a sense of ease comes over them. Mm -hmm. And that 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 ease becomes addictive. And so like I, I appreciate the there's childhood um divorce that you dealt with and molestation that is part of how your addiction came to pass and who would have known if it would have, didn't happen maybe, maybe maybe you'd become an addict anyway maybe, maybe you wouldn't but not to miss those points mm -hmm. you know my my thing is what, what she just said that warmth rush so were you not feeling loved when you were younger that you felt that warmth you know because it comes from somewhere right it comes from our inner mm -hmm. um yeah, can you speak to that warmth? Yeah, yeah. So, that... yeah, I I feel um, there was not a lot of love 
there wasn't no, I love you, come give me a hug. Mm. You know what I mean? There wasn't that um, warm, uh, warm. Motherly. and Yeah. You know, we didn't get that nurturing. Mm. I wasn't nurtured. You know, um, it was never, in fact, it wasn't until I had my first child that my mom told me that she loved me. Wow. Mm. And I was 29 years old. How did that feel? Like, you to know, hear so, that. Let her feel that one right now. I know. Let her feel that one right now. <sighs> we have some issues with it. I'm sorry. So, um. Because oh, that's, that's yeah. something big. Let her feel that one right now. You were 29 years old. 29 the first years time you heard old. your mom say the words, I love you. Mm-hmm. Right, and, yeah. and, you... and I gave her a grandbaby. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so there was no, you know, it was all about your bad, uh, always getting a beaten, you know what I mean? Because I was always causing trouble. I was always fighting with other kids. I was always searching for that affection mm-hmm. and the love, you know, and my dad, my real dad never came around anymore. And um, so I was always... Um, fighting for that affection, whether if I was getting my ass beat with a belt, Mm. chased down the street with with a a coat hanger, Mm. you know, because I would run because, you know, I didn't want to get hit. These are other other abuses, right? You know, so, yeah, Physically abused. You you were neglected from love. Like, you didn't have these things. Mm -hmm. And you said that to me, like, when you were a kid and that new baby came and you weren't the baby anymore, it was a it was another removal of attention, yes. right? Human beings need that, especially children. Mm-hmm. I, want, I want to weave you in here, Tonya. I want you to, you know, share kind of what you're hearing about, you know, what Kathy's saying or like more of your own experience. Like, tell us where you, how this came for you. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, so um, I started using at the age of nine. Mm-hmm. You um, but let me, I need to back up. Okay. So at the age of five, we have mm-hmm. cognitive memory, right? Mm-hmm. We, like we, we, we start. Subconsciously remember. Re- yes. Remember things. Yes. And as far back as I, I um, age five can remember, I was dreaming about girls at that age. So my sexuality played a huge part mm-hmm. in, in my uh, drug addiction. Um, so at nine, mm-hmm. I started out with using pot. Mm-hmm. Right, and I started hanging around a lot of the older kids because I was I was a surfer girl. I I skateboarded with all the. I was a tomboy, you know. Imagine that. Um, <laughs> yeah, imagine that. And um, so, and then I also came from. Now I didn't come from a broken family, mm-hmm. but I did cut. My 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 parents were very loving, and I always had everything I needed and wanted. You know that was that was that. However. Um, I, too, came from a family that we didn't speak about, say, I love you. Mm -hmm. So I was always seeking that attention, especially from my father. Mm. My father was a longshoreman, Mm -hmm. right? And he was very strict. And um, that's just the way he was. And and he never said, I loved you. However, I always seeked for his approval. Mm. Always. Everything I did. I strived in school. Mm -hmm. I did good. I got good grades. I bring them home. But I would never hear good job. It was always what you what what I didn't do, mm-hmm. right? And he would never say I love you and I would always be I just wanted him to tell me tell that he loved me him. because growing up, I mean that little girl inside of me, that's all she wanted to hear was that daddy loved, loved her. her. Now were you the only girl? I'm the oldest and only girl. And only girl. I have three younger brothers. And yes, I I know <laughs> your brother, yes, from work. But you know, that's interesting that she does say this because my father didn't say I love you. He never ever told me that he loved me, even until the day that he died. And it killed me. Mm. And it still kills me. <laughs> but um, he showed it. Exactly. So th- how my father showed it was through money, buying us things, yeah. having a house over, you know, having whatever we wanted. Or we, we, hugs here and there. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, not with him. Was, okay. No assuming, Lou. No yeah. assuming. Yeah. Well, with him, <laughs> it, with, with him he, he, he yeah, provided. Yeah. He was a good provider. He... This is how, yes. and, and yes. I know that now, yes. you know. As we're uh, adults, we, as, we realize yes. it, and right? And they did the best they could with what they Absolutely. had. There's no book that says, this era. is how you raise your children, blah, 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 blah. You know, Correct. Th- th- there is. So you, you had this kind of like what would appear to be on the outside, a healthy upbringing, parents together, got to eat the steak dinner and skate and surf and all the stuff, but you, 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 
you knew that you were dreaming about girls at a young age and that was kind of close to the chest. Yes. And that you also, you, 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 you're saying the same thing that we heard earlier with Kathy is like the human need for love, the human need for love, attention, feeling a part of all that stuff, all right? of it. Even though let's say dad was, you know, working and, you know, Providing. got you the skateboard. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a, there's an innate desire to hear. Like I need to hear you say that I'm a part of, I, I need right. to hear you say, I love you. And when that needs not met, Right. My, my thing I want to make a point of is like Lash human out. beings were smart. We'll figure out another way to get the need met. Yeah. And you said that you kind of discovered pot and you're going to say more about. Yes. Your, yes. So I, disco I discovered pot and then, you know, it, it, it that, that escalated into cocaine. And then from the cocaine, it escalated into meth. And this can this continued. But I, the common denominator here was me mm -hmm. because I was trying to fill a hole. Yes. Right of feeling the love and acceptance and, and wanting to be a part of, um, I wanted to be everybody's friend. Mm -hmm. And so my thing was, if I couldn't get it, if I couldn't get the love at home, I'm going to seek it through other people, Somewhere. correct? Yes. Through my friends and, yes. and, and pl people pleasing and all that stuff. Yes. And that was a huge part of becoming an addict. And you know, it's mm. interesting that she mm. says that. Because in one of mm. my other episodes, one of the guys said he came and he grew up in a in a great home too, but because he didn't get that love, he went out on the streets, you know, and and that's what happens because gang members you know, become your family, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have it at home, you're gonna go out and find it, you know, whether it's a gang, drugs, alcohol, but you go out, you go out and search for you it, seek it, yes, you see, you seek exactly. It. Yeah, so I just want to hold that as like I think that's a very natural part of our humanity is that we we want to have love and connection and when we don't get it we will figure out another way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right like you said like i i i figured out how to be really pleasing socially mm -hmm. how to say the right stuff and, and kind of get get the need met get fill the hole and part of that was also discovering substances to kind of yeah fill the hole yeah. you know? i mean i was a i was an outgoing person i played you sports are. Yeah, i am <laughs> you know <laughs> outgoing, played yes. sports, did everything, had thousands of friends. But I think what it, what it came down to, what I, what I found nowadays is that it was me who I, looking in the mirror, I didn't love myself. Mm. I didn't like myself, mm. you know? Like and that's a lot of what I used. I didn't know it at the time, right? I didn't know it at the time. So let me ask you a question, Tanya. Did you not like yourself because you weren't being truthful to yourself? Like you said you were interested in girls. Did you not say anything because you didn't want your Of parents? course not. That was like being being brought up in San Pedro. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, it, it, uh, b being gay mm -hmm. is, is, is not, is, it was a frowned on back then, right? Mm -hmm. So I had a secret. Mm -hmm. Right. And I stuffed that for many, many years. I drank and used over that for many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I remember I was 23 years old when I came out to to my mom. My mom was a travel agent at the time. And um, I came out to her and um, uh, she, when I told her, she was like, oh, my God, they have gay cruises. They've got all these things <laughs> yeah. you can do. And I was like, really? Mm -hmm. I, she, my mom was awesome. Yes. When my dad found out, it was a complete opposite. You know, it was very heartbreaking. He wasn't very accepting at all. It was like you ruined the family name. I can't, you know, it, he, he just didn't know how to, how, how how to, to deal with it. Yes. And, um, but as time has gone on, you know, obviously, um, <laughs> yeah, he, we have an awesome relationship You're today. You're his baby awesome. girl. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I am. I mean, now, it's only baby, baby girl. girl. <laughs> so have you said, Dad, do you love me? Can you say I love you? He does now. Good. He does. Good. It, it's, it, so Good. I got. Yes. So I drank and used for many, many years. And I was introduced to a recovery program in 89. Mm -hmm. um, and the family, we did family, you know. Sessions. Sessions and stuff too. So um, it took a long time. But. I don't, I don't think I need to go in. I have a lot of relapses and, 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 and going in and out of the program. And, and um, when I was 50 years old, I finally made a decision to 
to um, get clean again. And this time I, d- I did things a lot differently. Um, heroin is what brought me to my knees. Mm-hmm. Um, I've used every drug under uh, uh, gar- garbage disposal, I guess you would say, right? But heroin is what really brought me to my knees. And um, I remember calling home um, to my mother, and I was living in Long Beach um, on uh, Cherry and Cherry and Seventh, and um, telling her I needed to come home because I needed to get clean. Mm. And um, she said, "Come home," and I did. And my dad was there too, and I detoxed at home, and it was the worst detox of my life. Oh. But I'm glad I did it that way because. Um, Was it your safe haven there? Was it not necessarily my safe haven, but the the the, the thing about I had tried to get into a a, a program, okay. right? A detox program. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I thought that that would be the easier, softer way. All my previous times before, I've I've gone into inpatient or I've gone to sober living. I've always found the easier, softer way, mm-hmm. and I'm kind of glad that I didn't do that this time because I don't forget. It was horrible. It was torture, um, vomiting, you Cold know, it, 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 everything. Just, just, just my muscles aching it, it just for 30 days straight. Wow. But I don't forget that. But I will tell you this. My father mm. came up to the room <clears throat> and he said, and I was, I was sicker than a dog. And he said to me, he says, Tonya. Me and my mother, me and your mother love you very much. And you're going to stay here and you're going to get clean and we're going to love you and take care of you the whole way. And, and he told me he'd love me. And it, that broke my, that just, it was just like. Everything, right? A, everything. Yes. That's all I needed to That's hear all. is that yes. I was his baby girl and mm-hmm. he was going to help me. And he loved you. Yes. He and that he you. loved you. And, and, and from that point on. From that point on what? We've ha- we have the most awesome <laughs> relationship the now. Best relationship. It's how, so how 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 I love I love hearing you talk about that moment. Right? Like I feel like I like I like the tears in your eyes. Yeah. Right? It was like what a powerful experience of like I wanted my dad's love, mm-hmm. and I, here I am at the depths of like pain and despair bone and every chattering, yes. you know, and like discomfort. And he walks in there and he goes, Tonya, <laughs> your mother and I. We love you, and we're gonna help you through it. And it was mm-hmm. like, like, and that was like healing. Like pa- That's all pain you- and love at the same time. Feels like, like that was, yeah. That's powerful. It, 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 it was very powerful. It, the little girl inside of me finally just broke loose. <sighs> yeah, it was like a relief. It was like, yay, daddy. You know, oh. crazy. Yeah. But um, and and I think at that moment, that's when our relationship was able to heal and make a total three sixty. And from that point on, um, I just celebrated six years clean on uh, March. Um, Yay, congratulations. Yeah, on, Where's our applause? On March 9th. We get applause. Yay. 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 On March 9th. Yes. And um, longest time I've ever been clean. And it, that my relationship with my father is, is, is awesome. He's still a pain in my, a thorn in my butt. But you know what? That's yes. just who he is. Yes. I mean, but I love him to death. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I, I I've always wanted that relationship, and at 50 years old, I finally got that relationship. So, I, I, go ahead. I interrupted you. Well, what I was going to say is, is before, um, all through college, all through high school, you know, I was seeking, seeking, yeah. seeking, and um, and then when I got got in as a as a casual, you know, that would be the only thing we'd have in common to talk about was work, mm-hmm. you know, but it, it it we'd sit in a room. And if we didn't talk about work, it'd be like this. Mm. I mean, you could literally hear a pin drop, yeah. right? Yes. We, I didn't know what to say to him because I was so, um, I, I had a lot of fear with him. Yes, yes. So I'll tell you, in my, in my, uh, in my treatment center, part of our work is, is family repair. And so like, one of the things, I, I, have, I have a couple of questions. Like, I almost feel like I want to play a game with you guys. You guys can okay. choose. <laughs> but like, I, I don't want to skip over something of like, I'm gonna be a little bit mushy, yeah. Lou. I'm gonna let it loose, but I'm gonna be a little mushy. Get it's a like, little mush, mush. But like, love it. Love is an important thing. Absolutely. Right? Like, I think Absolutely. it's. I think it's very, very critical to hear and not forget that like there was a moment in your almost 30 years old, 
having the first time having your mother say, I love you and acknowledge you in this way. Mm -hmm. And that for 29 years, you had to live without that, yeah. you know, or like for you having to spend all this time 50 years trying to garner your father's affirmation and just to hear the words and then to finally hear the words and do, do the sigh, yeah, you know, and then, and to have the relationship now, it's like, it's what, it's what, makes life what it is at its richest you know we obviously know that it's really bad and that's part of what we're talking about is like the 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 the, the hard part of it but i'm so happy to hear that like there was this uh repair of sorts you know moments of joy moments yeah. of joy yeah. yeah i call it kodak so, moment kodak yeah. moment <laughs> so I, my here's my questions i, I have a few and maybe we, you, you can pick the one that speaks to you there's part of me that wants to just ask about can you talk about the the peak of the low where it's like this was so bad this is this is how i how i knew i needed to like seek the worst, like you were at the bottom or quick like so maybe speaking to that was an idea or another one might be like there are people who know that they got a detox and like they they they're avoiding it because it's painful like what what did you do or like what's the t what's the, your tip of like hey you know like this is what i did and you know offering offering some advice um or maybe talking a bit more about like what family means to you now is it maybe as it relates to your recovery those are some of my ideas i'll let you pick pick one of those okay well um i can say um so i have two girls mm -hmm. right i have two daughters and um I drug them through my addiction, mm -hmm. right? I was married, two kids. Mm -hmm. I own my own business, and uh, I lived a completely different lifestyle at night. Mm -hmm. My ex-husband worked nights. Mm -hmm. I worked days. Mm -hmm. So he would go to work. I would have the sitter come and watch the kids, mm -hmm. and I would go sling dope mm -hmm. and get high. And, not, and then my kids would always be like, Mom, don't leave, don't leave. And I'm like, oh, I'll be back, I'll be back. So I, they had a lot of abandonment issues. And um, I didn't know at the time what I, the damage I was causing, mm -hmm. right? Um, they were 8 and 11 when I got clean. So thank God. I thank God every day that they were still young enough. Mm -hmm. My oldest is the one who seeks therapy right still, you know. Um, she started seeking therapy for some of the damage that I caused, which she doesn't know that I know. And if she sees this podcast, she's going to know that I know she goes to oh. therapy now, but whatever. <laughs> How old is I she love now? her. She's 30. Okay. She's 30. And she just moved to Colorado Springs. Her and her fiance bought a house and they're getting married in June. Yay. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. My, yes. Thank yes. you. And my youngest just got married in November. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. So they are truly, truly amazing, amazing, amazing young women. They are not an addicts. They, right. my youngest experimented. And she got busted, and then she got her shit together, and she just, like, stopped. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, she did recovery for a little while, for, like, two years. <clears throat> uh, my oldest uh, smoked pot for a very short minute, um, but neither one of them went down the road that they saw me going down. And, um, but it was, um, I never thought that I really had a problem mm -hmm. with drugs. I just liked to do drugs, mm -hmm. right? And I was always on a mission. You know, I was running my business. I had a house. I had a nice car. I had my kids. They were well dressed. I took them to soccer, volleyball. You know, cheerleading. Like they did all of all of everything. everything. Like they were not neglected. I told them I loved them all the time. I always made sure they had everything they wanted. I bought them spent you know uh, money. Yes. Always, I thought you know by giving them stuff, giving them money, taking them buy stuff was always like a way of showing how much I loved them. But in the Working on myself, I realized I was just buying their, you know, and, and getting their forgiveness by giving them money for them to forget what I, not being home for three days or four days or, you know what I mean? Yes. And, you know, and like I was explaining earlier, you know, this is what happens to women. Like if you're in an unhappy relationship, marriage, or you're divorcing, you know, that's, women tend to, you know, you don't want to slow down, especially when you have children. It's hard to slow down. And I had friends that were functional, like they would pop Vicodin with vodka and move, <laughs> you know, and, but they were functional, mm -hmm. but it, it's, you know, you move, you go. And it's crazy because you wouldn't expect, I, I, 
when my children were younger in elementary, there was a um, mom that would walk her daughter to school and she had a coffee cup in her hand. And for the longest time, I thought it was coffee. It was freaking vodka. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Straight <laughs> vodka. And I was like, oh my God, it's seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but she was functional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we... So there was like the whole the whole family the whole lifestyle like everything was fine like there was nothing you know it was yeah. just me living two lives and then i just remember like um toward the end it wasn't fun anymore mm -hmm. like it wasn't fun i was getting tired um you know the people i started hanging out with and starting to get into like hanging around with some bad people oh. doing bad stuff like doing check fraud and doing like, and I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I hanging out with these people? These people are criminals. Right. I'm not a criminal, right? I have a lot to lose. I have a business. I work part of the customs federal agents, like mm -hmm. the federal government. Yeah, You know, I have yes. a license. And um, so what happened for me was like toward the end, like before I turned 40, mm -hmm. I just remember just like, I would just be crying and sobbing and just praying to God, like, please help me, mm -hmm. help me. I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. So once wow. I started, pay, wow. once I picked wow. up that pookie, that pipe, and I started smoking meth, mm -hmm. I freaking started losing my life. Oh. Like everything revolved around that fucking pipe. And I'm sorry, I'm going to no, say it yes. because that is what happened. That is what took me to my knees. And I didn't care about my kids anymore. I didn't care about, you know, I, not that I didn't care about them, but they didn't come first. Now, was, right. you know what I mean? They no longer came first. It was that pipe. That meth, yes. yes. I couldn't take a shit without smoking. I couldn't take a shower without getting <laughs> high. I couldn't go to sleep without getting high. I couldn't get dressed unless I hit the, you, like nothing. I would lock my kids out of the room. <clears throat> they would put, my daughter, I remember she wrote this note and put it under the door and said, Mommy, I'm hungry. Can you feed me? <sighs> and I said, just hold on. I'll be out. Go eat some Cheerios. You know what I mean? Because I had people in my room that would steal my shit if I left them in the house, in my room, and I brought these people in my house with my children. Mm. You know what I mean? And I'm telling my daughter, I'm like, go go get some Cheerios. I'll feed you in a little while. You know what I mean? And and I know she remembers that. She she reminds me that she knows that she did that. You know? And there's there was no, you know. Yeah, thank you for saying that. Like, at the peak of it, I was... I, I, meth dominated my body. It dominated my mind. It dominated my behavior. And everything came first, including making my kid wait when she was hungry. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you, you, you we were at that place of like, yeah. that I have to protect the drug more than making my sure baby. my child is nourished. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine mean, that being like a, like I see it in your eyes, like quite a moment of like, wow, that's where I was at. Where I was and at. It's that's so, where you're at. And it's such a, that drug is just takes everything from it you. It's like it once you get to a certain point, you don't have a defense mechanism to 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 not get one more yeah. because that's what you're always doing. And it's not even like, and it doesn't even, um, it's not even really getting you high anymore. Yeah. Like it wasn't, I wasn't really, I wasn't getting high anymore. Was Main, I was just doing surviving it. Surviving. Surviving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you weigh in a little bit more on like what, what your depth was? Like how, I, oh, what, I, what was that like for you? When, okay, so I was doing the, when I was doing the meth, I was doing the heroin too. And for me, it was maintenance. Mm. What I didn't realize, now let me back up a little bit. When you say heroin, sorry to cut you, you mean like. No, no I didn't. I okay. wasn't shooting up. I was okay. smoking it. Okay. I, 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 I smoked heroin. But let me back up a little bit. I was dating a girl mm -hmm. at the time before I even started the heroin. And she would shoot it. Mm -hmm. And um, I was smoking meth. And. She had overdosed four times. I brought her back to life four times. Wow. And I, wow. I despised that mm -hmm. drug with a passion, mm -hmm. with a passion. Said I would never, mm -hmm. I would never do it. You never say never. <sighs> um, eventually, heroin became one of my yets, meaning that was eligible too, right? And um, I, a friend of mine introduced me to, to it, smoking it. And what I didn't realize at the time, never doing heroin is that once you succumb, you 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 succumb seventy two hours of doing it, you become dependent on it. Otherwise, you're going to become sick. Mm -hmm. And this is why. Yes. So it's like chasing your tail, right? Yes. 
Yes. So there were times, I remember there were times we'd smoke two days in a row and I'd say, okay, I have to take a break because I don't want to get dependent on it, right? Well, when you're an addict, you know, and, and, and it, the, it, it, it's, it's all about the means of getting more and doing more and, or, or just, just to survive, like Kathy said, just yeah. to survive, just one more day, mm -hmm. right? And I would spend days, I remember spending days on end trying to get my uh. next fix because I didn't want to be sick, mm -hmm. right? And um, towards the end, that's what it was. I, I, I had to have it. I had to have it so I wouldn't be sick. I wasn't doing it to get high anymore. Mm -hmm. It was about getting well, Yes, right? That's what they say, yes. getting well. And I would use meth too, but what I didn't realize is meth intensified the pain of get, becoming sick, yeah. right? But you don't think that. Yeah. You, you don't think that because you're going to do what, whatever. I mean, if, if, if somebody offered me a pill, I would say, okay, give it to me. Pot, give it to me. Whatever it was, it didn't matter. It's, as long as it, I didn't have to feel the feelings I was feeling and the pain I was feeling. Wow. Let's stuff some more, stuff some more, stuff some more. Okay. How common do you think that is for your like run of the mill addict to experience what you're describing? I think in meetings, when I sit in meetings, we have very, there's a lot of similarities. Yeah. We may not trudge the same exact road together, mm -hmm. but we have very similar stories. Mm -hmm. I think it's All important. It's the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. just to hear that, like, like your version is like, I, here I am locked in the bathroom with like, check frauding criminals and like a hungry kid passing a note under the door, totally dominated by drugs, unable to make decision anymore, just surviving or like you the same, right? Like I'm going up on the meth, I'm going down on the heroin. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm chasing my tail. I'm chasing my tail. I'm chasing my tail. Don't die. Don't feel right. And you're, you're completely dominated. And <laughs> you know, what do they say? Right? Like, uh, powerless, you know, demoralized. Yes. Right. And, Cunning, and, baffling, and, and powerful, and, period. It just doesn't. And the brain for decision-making is totally removed, right? You're, well, you're just in survival mode. Oh, yeah. You, you really can't even think the way that your normal intelligence would until you start getting treatment, which is, I guess. And it enables your train of thought, right? Because. Well, they say that when you, when the first time you use, and if you continue using, that's where your emotional level stops, correct? Mm -hmm. So. If I was to look back at all the years that I consistently used from age nine yeah. up until I was 50, I probably, when I came into recovery mm -hmm. at, at 50 years old, when I finally got clean and, and, and got some time under my belt and, mm -hmm. and, and my body started, that, that I was nine years old emotionally, wow. you know, wow. really. To, I want to hear a little about the good stuff. So like, what, how'd you, how did you guys uh, get well? Like what, what did that, what, what would you do to get where you're at now? Well, for me, for me, what happened was when, um, cause I own my own business. I still went to work. I still ran my business. I still, you were functioning. I was functioning. Yes. Right. And then, um, uh, I also like to go to the casinos mm -hmm. because what else do you do in the middle of the night when everyone's sleeping mm -hmm. and you're tweaked the fuck out and you can't sleep <laughs> you go to the casino, right? Yeah. So I had gone to the casino with a friend this one night and came back and went to my office and, um, <clears throat> I, I just had run out of drugs, so I didn't have a lot. I just had a little, but I had like some pills and like some odds and ends stuff, whatever. I didn't even know I even still had. And um, my friend was with me. She walked out of the door out the, of my office to go to the bathroom, and then she turned around and knocked on the door. And I was like, because well, she had forgot, right? Mm -hmm. So I opened the door, and I'm standing there, and Hawthorne Narcotics and Customs Federal agents are standing there at my door with their guns on me. Oh, shit. And I was, oh. yeah, I, at that moment, Ooh. I knew, like, <laughs> I'm done. Mm -hmm. I knew I was done, right? My ex-husband, my husband at the time, he had no idea that I was not only using drugs, let alone selling drugs. Like, he had no idea. So they arrested me. They went to the house. They searched the house. They, they pulled him out, and his first words were, you must have the wrong house. Like, my wife doesn't do drugs. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. And they handcuffed him and put him outside and tore up the whole house looking for drugs. And anyway, long story short, I got bailed out. I got out. And um, I would like to say that I stopped mm -hmm. when that happened. But before that, when I was saying, like, when I wanted, when I was getting high and I wanted to stop and I kept praying to God, praying to God, when I turned 40, I wanted to stop using. 
when they came knocking on my door, it was August 14th of 2004. And my birthday was September 16th, 2004. I turned 40. Wow. So it was just shy of a month of my 40th birthday. 40th birthday. But I didn't get clean until April 25th, 2005. So, so it took me eight months, eight months of going back to court, yeah. almost going to prison because I couldn't stay clean for my probation officers. So then after that, so finally, when I finally surrendered mm -hmm. and I started going to meetings, um, well, I went... Uh, to this outpatient place, crawled in there with my tail between my legs. I rode my bike. So I had a nice convertible, mm -hmm. right? And then um, I called up Toyota and told him to come take the car. I didn't want it anymore. And I bought myself a pink beach cruiser. Oh, cute. <laughs> okay, so, and my kids, I, they both got bike. We all three got new bikes. Yeah. We all three got bikes, right? And I rode that bike from my house to Old Torrance, which is probably about... Five miles, mm -hmm. I rode my bike, and I walked in. I went to treatment, outpatient. So everywhere I went, I went on a bike with my kids. On mm -hmm. the bus, we'd go to meetings. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I walked in there, I just said, I need help. And she, the lady took me under her wing and said, okay, we're going to drug test. This, that, my probation officer. Because I wasn't clean. I wasn't staying clean. I was about to go to jail. I didn't, couldn't make it to test with my probation officer because I was dirty. Mm -hmm. Because I used. Right. And I was trying to figure out a way how to pass this drug test by getting a friend to bring me some pee, like trying to strap it on with the baggie, yeah. you know, with the oh, urine yeah. under a dress <laughs> and trying to make it come out, you know, practicing with water <laughs> oh, and trying to yeah. make it go, you know, without making noise. The and things like, doing, we do. Oh, yeah. And I literally strapped yeah. on a bag yeah. with water practicing before I put the urine to go test at my probation. And I by the time I figured it all out, it was too late. I was late. I was a dirty. It was considered a dirty. That was my third strike. Oh. That was my literally my third strike. That's when I went, got on that bike and I went to the outpatient, got the papers, called my probation officer, told her what happened. She said, "Bring me the papers. Show up on your next call when your name comes up, and make sure you're clean." And she gave me a second chance. That's beautiful. she gave me a second chance, and um, and that's where my when my journey began. What What about the bike riding or? the outpatient treatment center or um, uh, 12 step um, involvement. What, how, how did, what, what, what worked for you or, or what still works today? So I started going to meetings and um, after uh, 60, 90 days, I got a sponsor mm -hmm. and then I started working steps and just going to meetings. And um, I would go to probably sometimes two to three meetings a day because I didn't know what to do. Yeah. And I didn't know how to not use drugs. And I didn't want to use drugs because I didn't want to go to jail and I didn't want to lose my kids. I, if I may, I'm, did uh, children's, um, did they come and remove No, the you know, wow. that was like a blessing from God. Mm -hmm. Okay, my kids were in um, sports camp. <clears throat> my kids were at sports camp. It yeah. was summer, the end of summer, toward the ending of summer uh, in August. So they were in sports camp. And um, so when they came, I, I don't even know how. They didn't get involved, but I do remember this one, um, uh, the, who, I think it was a police officer. Somebody was like, well, we can tell your, your husband loves your children unlike you. Oh, wow. And I was like, what do you mean? Jeez. Because I did drugs and he didn't. Mm. So I guess they figured that he would be able to take care of them. Or I don't know why, C C what is it, Child Protective Services? Services. Never got called in. Well, Never. thank God. Yes, thank God. And then, because I don't know what would happen if that. I have another question because I know that you said at a young age you were molested. Now, were you not afraid going through this that at any time if you would have knocked out or say, um, you know, you were out with your friends that someone would have done that to your daughters? Did it ever cross your mind? It did. It did. Because that's something that's scary, right? As a mom, you know, and you have, I mean, even as a father, but, you know, you have children, like, it's its just, that's scary. That mm -hmm. scares me so much all the time. Like, that's one of the biggest things that's especially going on right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's its bad. So, yeah. yeah. I'm like, that. My that's what crossed my mind. Oh, See, I, mean, I was a good mom be because I only had my yeah. friends, girlfriends, yeah. that watched oh, my kids. Okay. Right. Okay. So I was a good mom. Yes. Right. I had to live in nanny for like a three years, three, four years after I had my second child. I had to live in nanny. Mm -hmm. 
to take. It is a it is a good point to make though. Like you know, addiction makes people do incredibly oh. negative things that they would never do if they were not drinking. So it's it's a good point to make. Um, can you can you talk, to Tonya, about yourself? Like, how about how about you? Like, what 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 worked for you in your well, healing journey, recovery? Like, what still works? My journey began in '89. Right, I was introduced to to uh, I, I, I went to an inpatient program back in '89. I didn't stick around, but the seed I can say was planted. Mm -hmm. Right, so numerous numerous relapses from '89 until up until 2018, right, till I, till I got it. So um, what, with all those relapses, you know, eventually you learn something, right? I was, I was able to stay clean for nine months. I was able to stay clean for a year and a half. I think that was the longest I ever had was a year, was a year and a half prior, prior to, to now. Um, I was a good sabotager, mm. right? Mm. I, I, I would sabotage myself because I didn't feel like I deserved, deserved. anything, right? I didn't d d didn't deserve to 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 have clean time or or stick around. There was always something, and um, some I, I had every excuse in the book. I can tell you every excuse in the book. Oh, he, she, my parents, this, that. Oh, I had a bad day, so I got the fuckets and I went and got loaded. So you know, any excuse to do it. Any excuse. Yes, any excuse. Any excuse. I was good at that because I hadn't worked on myself. Yes, yes. See, what, 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 what I know today is that um, how I get to stick around here is you got to work the steps. The steps mm -hmm. in the program is what helps you peel away the layers of the mm -hmm. onion, right? Because it's an inside job. Mm -hmm. It's not an outside job, right? Life's going to go on. You're going to go through trials and tribulations, all the things, but you're going to need some type of tools, at least yes. th this addict. I definitely need tools. And I had to learn about myself. Like, what were my triggers? What, what, um, what are my, some of my assets? What are, what, 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 what are some of my, um, um, six and step six and seven, um, shortcomings and character defects. And, defects and, and yeah, and, and, yes, <laughs> you exactly. You know, because <laughs> it, I can all. feed on those character <laughs> yes. defects. I mean, Lord knows I'm not 100%. You know, the only thing I do correctly every day, 100% perfect, is I don't pick up. Mm. Mm. That's it. That's it. I don't pick up. Yes. But the seed, like I said, the seed was planted. So when I finally came back this time, I knew where to go. I, I, I knew where to go because I, I, I knew where my home was, right? Like, so I had a sponsor. The sponsor I still have, to, that I have today, is a sponsor who sponsored me. When she had four years clean, she just took 23 years clean. Wow. That's so she was my sponsor <laughs> when she had four years clean. So that tells you how far back mm -hmm. w we go. Yes. So I always knew where to go. I've, yes. I, I've, I've, ten, Toto has pretty much gotten off track a, f a few times down the line, right? But this time, I, w when I did come back, I, I did things differently. I hung out with people that had a lot of time yes. and that had, had what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Like, their, their their program um was was an attraction for me mm -hmm. it's like i i wanted what they have i want what they have so i hung out with those type of people and um because many times before i would i would feed on people that had less time like me so when i was a newcomer i would hang out with newcomers and we would thrive on the uh, on, on we were sickies. Yes. My sponsor always says, two sickies don't make a welly." Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. I mean, two sickies don't make a welly. <laughs> no, yeah. So, you know, so I th that always resonated, you know. It's good math. It, 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 is, it, right? is. it, it, it is. It is. It yeah. is. And um, so I, I just, I did things differently, and I got into the work, and I got into the, the, the literature, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I can do... 20,000, you know, back, back when I, um, on my relapses, I could do 20 meetings a week, mm -hmm. but that doesn't keep you clean. Okay. Can I, yeah, I wanna, go ahead. I, I, like, yeah. kind of, I'm, I'm going to break it down again. <laughs> break it down. Excuse me. <laughs> so one of the things I think that's great, and I think it's really important to hear is like each of you saying, yes, there was like a moment mm -hmm. and I, it did bring me to my knees. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, yes, I went to a, a treatment center of sorts. It was important, but maybe what was the most important was getting involved in a in a twelve step community, getting into the 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 steps, the philosophy. You know, like you said, like you started to hang out with the winners. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at what, uh, people who had things that you wanted and asking them how they got it, and mm -hmm. and peeling the onion, starting to kind of work through the steps and kind of addressing yourself um and that 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 is what has worked the most and i'll tell you as like as a human being as a therapist what 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 i think pound for pound that's better for better than any treatment i've ever seen is, is the 12 steps yes uh, I, I think that my skills of therapy or different th therapists or different therapies that we offer are, are, are great but but what 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 is the best pound for pound is a 12 step um, philosophy. Yes. So it's cool to hear both of you that is saying so awesome. that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to ask you guys I maybe mean, like two last things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, one is like, <laughs> He's can you guys, if you would, like, was there, was there a, a spiritual awakening or a psychic experience that was like a pivotal to your recovery or something that just was like really cool that happened as a result of your? um journey of recovery and then and then like give us a little juice around like like the good stuff of like life is this is this is the best of life of now where you guys are like at. where i am now like here here's some of like the espn top 10 highlights of my life that <laughs> i i get to live every day yeah i, don't know, I think my spirit my i think um for me was just um so getting off drugs wasn't easy the detox part. But I tell you because um, there's a part of my story too where um, in my line of work, you cannot be a convicted felon, mm -hmm. right? So I went to the courthouse and I tried to get my file expunged, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And the judge looked at me and he said, no, you're a criminal. We are not expunging your file. Mm -hmm. I really don't know word for word what I said but I know that I broke down in tears and snot and everything was flying all over the place. And my per public defender had to hold me up. And I think I just blurted out something. This is my life and my kids. And I don't even know what else. Three months later, I got a letter from the judge and he expun he oh. expun he, uh, he accepted the, yeah, your request. He expunged my file. So I no longer had a felony. But then after that, I had to fight a case with customs. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the long story of it was that I ended up keeping my license. Mm -hmm. I've been in business now almost eight years again. And by doing this and praying to God and telling God that, for one, removing the obsession to use, and number two, that if you if this, if this you um, help me in this situation, that I will never, ever, ever use again. <sighs> and the obsession to use drugs was lifted, and God just carried me the rest of the way. Mm. And now I'm a successful businesswoman. Isn't that beautiful? Right? And we travel. We got married. I love that. We got married on uh, February 20th, yes, 2020, right before love COVID. Pictures. Yes. Yeah. So right before COVID, we got married and we went to Palm Springs, came back, and we're locked down <laughs> during for COVID. And but you know Perfect what? Perfect honeymoon. <laughs> but yeah, but you know what? I have truly have an amazing yeah. life. I have an amazing relationship with my children. I have um amazing relationship with her, you know, my extended family. Um, my recovery, um, like we do this recovery thing together. That's the every morning part. we read our books, yes. we share reading. Yes. You know what I mean? We do our prayer meditation and we just like live life, that's, you know, that's and travel right? and just, yeah. That's we have a life beyond our wildest dreams. And bought a house. I bought a house in 2019. Like I never thought I'd be buy a house. I bought a house yeah. and then, you know what I mean? It's just, and who would have known that with all that that you guys have gone through that this is this is what it it's mm -hmm. all about right it's mm -hmm. it's perceiving right getting past all that and living well you have great jobs yeah. you know great perseverance yes yes Perfect. it's beautiful and look at you smiling and happy mm -hmm. and healthy I'm gonna let you you know yeah. give us juice but I can't help myself and just say like you know what, what what's coming up in me is the Godshot moment of like a judge, Ooh. you know, representing the state of California saying, you're toast, mm -hmm. right? And he, and he or she can swing the mallet and it's over. Yeah. 
right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and you said earlier in our conversation, you said addicts are good people. Yeah. You said that, yeah. right? And something happened where like um, God delivered, right? It was like, you know what? She is a good person and I'm, we're going to expunge this and she's going to, She's going to continue, right, for herself. Second, and huh? Second chance. Second chance, yes. right? Like, not everybody gets that, right? Yes. Like, you know, point blank range, you are a criminal. You yes. are not going to get this. And then, like. And that thing went it feels like <gasps> It sounds like that was, like, the, the God shot moment of, like, no, mm -hmm. no, we're going to, we're, she's going to, she's going to do this job. Um, And then to live the life you live today. Like, I, the next thing I want to, that's coming up in my mind is if we were painstaking about this phase of our development. Right, it's like yep. real promises coming true of like, mm -hmm. I have a family, I've got a relationship with my daughters, I have a wonderful partner, you know, it's we're beautiful. married, I, I bought a house, you know, mm -hmm. and like you get to you get to live this killer yeah. life. Um, thank but, you for sharing that. Yeah. We, we, you know, we, I was just yeah. gonna say, um, we we have to remember that us being addicts that. Um, if we don't put recovery first, mm -hmm. none of this would be possible. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Recovery, God. Yeah. You know, and absolutely. The, and, and then us. You yes. know, you, you know what I mean? It, 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 it's it's a bottom line because look, I can get some good ideas, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I can get some good ideas. Yeah. I got lots of people up here telling me some crazy stuff sometimes. Oh, oh crazy. <laughs> oh yeah. Crazy. How crazy? Yeah. Well, look you know, real smart, I'll give them a good you. idea. They'll say, okay, well. We can do that. You can have one drink. It's not going to hurt you. Uh, you can smoke yeah. a joint. Da, da, da. I mean. But you don't want to trundle back, go in that rabbit hole. No, it's not worth it. The, 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 the key with that is I have to play the tape through. Yes. What's going to happen if I do do that? Oh. Where am I going to end up? Mm -hmm. And I already know with lots of relapses under my belt, you know, I already know what's going to happen. Because it leads me right, you know, right back to the same yes. lonely, dark spot. Yeah. You know, you don't want to be there. Tell, tell us about. Did you yeah. did you have any particular psychic change or spiritual event that occurred? Of course or I like did. Well, of course, my father mm -hmm. coming up. Yeah, that was my that. first spiritual awakening. Oh. And then what, when I got done doing the steps, I had it. It I can't explain to you what I have felt when I completing the steps and then working with others. Mm. You know, uh, sharing my experience, strength, and hope with others. You know, when I get out of myself. You have these aha moments. Yes. You know, it's it's like being here. Like, um, I hope to God this reaches just what? one addict. And if one it, addict. If it reaches one person, that's that's, that's yes. then our mission is is exactly. complete, right? I, I've done my job. Right. But um I've had lots of spiritual awakenings. Yes. Do you really, have any favorite ones recently or one that comes to mind that's your biggest worthy to one, share? Your, I'll, t I'll, I'll tell you one I had before I, before I got clean this last time. Um, um, I was casualing, and um, I was still using. And, um, and, and this is how I know mm -hmm. God works, right? I had a bad accident mm -hmm. on the way to a job. Mm -hmm. um, and I, um, Mo, he, it, it was a gentleman that found my, it was a bad, bad accident. It was a car accident, right? A bad car I accident. I remember that, yes. Remember? Mm -hmm. Engine in the front seat. They, I, I, I pretty much was no good. A guy, a gentleman from local 13 found, um, my driver's license in, in the street, mm -hmm. called my brother because he played softball with him. He called my mom and dad. The fire chief said, she's not going to make it. You need to guys go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I flatlined, mm -hmm. right? I died for a few minutes and I remember God telling me, child, you have much more work to do. I'm not ready for you. And then I woke up. Now, you think I would have took, taken that as, as a huge spiritual awakening to getting clean, but I didn't. I had to trudge a little bit longer before I got it, but I always remember that. So I know my God has a choke chain on me, right? <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And he wants me, or she wants me, I don't know, um, to, to get some type of message out. Yes. So I try my hardest, mm -hmm. I try my hardest to be an example and to help others. Absolutely. Um, I don't sponsor anybody yet, but maybe I, maybe he's uh, it's just not ready. But He'd be a great sponsor. I, I, I think so I, I think too. I would be, right? I think I would be. Great. I, I have You're lots, that. lots of experience yes. and I have lots of yeah. stories and, 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 and you're and so lots caring and loving and bubbly, you know, and, and, Hopefully somebody out there sees this and could reach out and feel the warmth 
you know, the sincerity in you. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what I'm hoping. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, like, you know, hearing God say to you, that's you got huge. more to Trippy. You got more to do. Yeah. Is my, my getting to know you for just a night? Like my my gut says, it's it it is this carrying the message, right? Your mm-hmm. your 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 trajectory is to be a beacon of light and to offer your, you know, experience. You know, share your warts and blemishes and the good and the bad, and like show people that like, hey, like there's another life that's possible. You know, I'm living this cool life now. You know, it wasn't always like yeah. that. No. Yeah. Wasn't and, and if I could help one newcomer coming yes, in, absolutely. Who, because I've had experience of, of of relapsing. If I can be the example of what not to do, mm-hmm. I can save them. You know, maybe I can yes. save them some some grief yes. from not going in and out. To just maybe give the you know, we always say in in the program, um, just keep coming back and give it a year. If you if 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 you don't like what you see mm-hmm. in a year mm-hmm. of staying clean, then we will refund you and you can go back out and get loaded if you want. But and you know, hundred times that's not going to happen, right? Because your life is going to get better. And period. It, it warms my heart to know that they went beyond, because as I've addressed before, my I have five brothers, right? And the youngest of the five, he was an addict and he didn't make it. And it was sad because he didn't have that opportunity. Or maybe he didn't choose it. However, whatever it was, God chose to take him. And that's hard. The thing is, is there is a different way to live. And and, 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 and there there is help out there. Yes. There is. Yeah, but at the same time, like, a lot, some people just don't know. Right. Okay, like, so when I was using, I didn't know about Narcotics Anonymous or alcoholics, or I, I didn't know about the A's. Okay, like I didn't know where to go to get help, right? I checked myself into the hospital and tried to get 5150 because I wanted to get off drugs. And you know what they did? They kicked me out. <laughs> They're like, oh, you're only on drugs. Get out. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah. After leaving, I told them, I said, don't let me, if, you che- if I get kicked out of here tonight, I could die. Oh. And they still, they didn't, they didn't, wouldn't, they wouldn't keep me. Incredible, and I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to start moving towards a close. Yes. You know, is is there any any uh, things that are left unsaid? Any tips or bits of advice for people who are listening or watching, or maybe questions that are not answered? Uh, just uh, if you're an addict and you want to seek recovery, recovery is there. There's hotline phone numbers. Go call the number and show up and reach out and people will help you. And if you you can live another life, like you can live two lives in one lifetime. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. if they don't want to make that 1-800 call, they're always welcome to reach out to Kathy or Tanya. That's right. Or Steve. Or me. Absolutely. We We will find a way. My devotion. Absolutely. I'll I'll say a little bit and I'll I'll, I'll speak to that in a moment. But is is there any other kind of tips or advice or things that you would say or you, you've said it I, I think i've said it I know. You okay. know i'm pretty much an open book and and I, I, i'm willing to help anybody i yes you are i am and i thank you so much because honestly this hopefully will reach one person at least yes. right that's, it. that's, one, that's all it takes one person so one more break it down okay here it comes <laughs> here it comes <laughs> style you know he's, that? he's all excited it just comes with the dinner you know it's just part of the service i just roll that in it doesn't cost extra um <laughs> is is, is i think i think i think what's really really beautiful about the conversation so what, what i have discovered i'm 44 is that I, I love i love addiction i like i like people who who know about it and i like people who, who have suffered with it not that i want them to experience suffering but because there's something really beautiful underneath it, right? And, and and I got to hear that again tonight, right? Is that like people with addiction typically are wonderful people yeah. and that you have to shut up and listen. And if you listen enough and you care enough, mm-hmm. you'll discover is that underneath their using is pain of some sort. There's like, a, I didn't get this type of love or I was traumatized or I was crossed in a way that shouldn't happen in our humanity. And And people are quick to judge criticize throw away but like if you if 
underneath that there is the pain and underneath that pain is this that really layer. is this beautiful person mm -hmm. right and that, like what's so cool about listening to you guys which i think is very inspiring like when i hope viewers find it inspiring is like if you are using now you were thinking about it, or you're listening to this and you're like, this guy's a fucking quack, fuck this guy. <laughs> Fine, fuck me. But like underneath, underneath your use is probably pain. Mm -hmm. And underneath your pain is your humanity and that you're probably a really good person. Mm -hmm. And these women have said it, right? Like you could live this other way. Yeah, I, I like the quote, you could live two, how did you say that? Two lives in one lifetime. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, thank you guys for bringing it tonight. Thank You're welcome. All right, you guys are so awesome. Thank, thank you, thank you so for having much. us. Oh my goodness, you guys are always welcome. The <laughs> stories are great. So with this all said, thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. Our time has ended, and Aww. it's so sad because it was a really. I know it was. It was a really good episode, and I want to thank you guys so much. And hopefully, you guys will be, you know, willing to come back, give some more stories, and. Sure. Hopefully we'll find that one person we could help out, right? Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. For that. Hey, good night, guys. <laughs> this was awesome. I, was. I, I, I'm looking forward to more. And absolutely. I, I, have, I have said it. There's no more breakdowns. Yes. <laughs> no more breakdowns. No more, no more breakdowns for, <laughs> for this evening. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, guys. Thank you so much for viewing, listening. We hope that you guys have a great evening and stay tuned for a following episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like, like and comment. And comment and follow. Bye. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and listening. It truly means the world to me. If you enjoy the show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe at Let Loose With Lou on Instagram, YouTube, and Spotify.